Revenue Management a Motivating Example. I'm going to introduce revenue management and the benefits of, uh, of this uh, approach using an example of a 60-room hotel. Uh, and we're going to focus on selling um, the, the reservations for the rooms with, uh, for just one night. And we will assume that the demand depends on price uh, in, as this function indicates. So, uh, for example, if you throw it a price of $140, P is 140, half of that is 70, so 100 minus 70, demand will be 30. And since we have 60 rooms, we can actually sell 30 rooms. If we lower the price, we can sell more rooms. So how would you price the rooms? So the first thing we need to recognize is if there was no capacity, we could just say that our revenue, which I will call, our, call unconstrained revenue, would be just price times demand. But since there is capacity, my revenue will really be price times the minimum of demand and capacity. Right? And the reason for this is the moment demand exceeds capacity, I will not be able to sell uh, to satisfy all the demand. I will only be able to sell what the capacity indicates, and this capacity C is 60. Right? So what's the solution for this problem? Well, this is a single variable optimization problem, but it's not linear because demand depends on price, or here demand depends on price, and there is price that multiplies this function in both cases. But we can plot it and easily see that um, this is a quadratic function. So we consider this unconstrained function. It's a nice blue line, blue line that is hidden here by the green one. Right, this is the unconstrained revenue, and you see it's a quadratic function that is concave, has one maximum, and this maximum happens to be at the value 100. We can verify this by calculating the derivative for, for this function, the first derivative, and making it equal to zero. And if you consider the constrained revenue, it's the green line that you see is capped here, and it is capped here because the moment you go with the price uh, 80, right, if you put 80 here, half of 80 is 40. So uh, 40, 100 minus 40 is 60. This is where you have uh, exactly demand matching capacity. And you see that at the moment you decrease this price further, the demand will exceed 60 rooms. And so this minimum uh, now switches from demand to capacity. And that's why there is a, a bit lower revenue for, for those values here at the price 80 and below. So I'm going to focus here on maximizing revenue instead of profit because in uh, operations like this hotel, uh, variable costs are very small. Um, they could still be considered. We could actually put price minus some variable cost here or here, right? And we would have a modified function. It would still be nice quadratic function with a single maximum. But uh, in many cases, it's simpler to just ignore the variable cost, assuming they are very tiny compared to the price and just maximize revenue. So if we do maximize revenue, you see on this chart that uh, the maximum revenue is achieved at a price of around 100. It is actually exactly $100. Uh, at that price, you can calculate the demand will be 50. We have more than 50 rooms, so we can actually sell 50 and achieve maximum revenue, 5,000. And notice we do not uh, use all the capacity. We just use 50 out of 60 rooms, but yet this is optimal from the perspective of maximizing revenue. The interesting feature of this problem is that uh, when you set the price very high, like for example at $200, your demand becomes zero, right? And so it doesn't matter that you have a very high revenue per, per unit, you don't sell anything, right? The, the, the demand will be zero, so you're not going to obtain any revenue. So it makes sense to reduce the price. But when you reduce the price, you're losing on the price, but gaining on the sales because the demand is increasing, right? And uh, again, on the other extreme, if you set the price to zero, you'll have the highest demand, 100. However, uh, that uh, demand will be satisfied at price zero. And again, that gives you zero revenue. So it doesn't make sense. So the op optimal solution, as you see, is somewhere in between. Right? It has to set the price such that uh, you get still reasonably high demand at reasonable high price. And uh, this quadratic function shows you that this will happen at exactly $100. But uh, the other thing I want you to see is that it will never make sense 
to set the price such that the demand is higher than capacity. Why is this? Because if you reduce the price, that means you're somehow affecting the revenue negatively, right? Reducing the price it lowers the revenue. However, it increases the demand, so it might increase the sales and therefore it might positively affect revenue, uh, right? That we calculate here. However, the moment you reach the demand reaches capacity, which in this case is at 80, right? The moment demand uh, uh, is equal to capacity, further lowering the price will def definitely not make uh, an improvement in revenue because you lower the price, so you decrease the revenue, but you don't gain anything on the sales. So, in fact, the revenue will definitely be decreased, right? The same sales capped by the capacity 60, uh, at lower price will definitely give you lower revenue. So we can recognize that in all solutions here, demand should be less than or equal capacity if you want to maximize revenue. Knowing that demand should not exceed capacity when we want to maximize revenue uh, allows us to formulate a nonlinear optimization problem uh, where price is the decision variable, revenue is defined as price times Demand, this is actually the quadratic part, um, and then we say demand should not exceed capacity, as we said, because we know what demands higher than capacity, revenue definitely will not be maximal, and we want to make sure price is not negative. So, of course, the optimal solution of this problem is still price 100, uh, sales will be 50, equal to demand 50, and the revenue will be 5,000. The interesting part uh, of this uh, problem is to look at the interpretation of the revenue uh, when we look at the demand price uh, relationship. And so you see here, right, the demand price relationship, which is right, this, this relationship is plotted here. And as we have price 200, at price 200, demand drops to zero. And at price zero, demand is maximum, it's actually equal to 100. So uh, the point, the price that maximizes revenue is 100 and we have sales 50 and then the revenue can be represented as this green area of this rectangle right it is the 100 times 50 and i hope you can easily imagine the rectangles if i put a price that is very high let's say 190 there will be a very flat rectangle here that will have a smaller area or if i put a much smaller price there will be a very tall but narrow rectangle with a smaller area than 5000 dollars. So the question here is, can we do better than this? So to see that there is an opportunity, consider the fact that among those people, those 50 people that pay $100, there are some people who are willing to pay actually a higher price, right? So the 50 people include also, let's say, 20 people who are willing to pay $160. If you plug in here 160, you get demand 20. So uh, and those 20 are the same people who now pay 100, but they were willing to pay 160. So there is an opportunity here. Of course, it's difficult to uh, capture it, but there was an opportunity if we only could make some people who are willing to pay higher price, uh, get them to pay a higher price, and the other people who are not willing to pay the higher price, uh, sell the same room to them at a lower price, perhaps utilizing even better the 60 room capacity, we could actually perhaps increase our revenue. So to find out the maximum profit, assuming we can charge two different prices, a higher price, P1, to those who are willing to pay that higher price, and some lower price, right, P2, to those who are willing to pay that, pay that lower price, we can solve, uh, we can formulate another uh, right uh, two price in this case two decision variable nonlinear optimization problem with a quadratic objective quadratic revenue function now this quadratic revenue takes the higher price and multiplies that that price p1 by the demand for this higher price and then adds to that the revenue from price p2 but that is multiplied not by full demand for p2 because remember that since this is a lower price, that demand will be higher, but it will also include people who are willing to pay the higher price P1. So we have to subtract this demand because we're assuming those people already pay price P1. Right? So this is an additional demand for the lower price who are willing to pay the lower price, but uh, are not willing to pay the higher price P1. Right? And of course, now 
Notice that DP2 is actually demand for both prices. So this is the demand will limit to be no more than the capacity in order to make sure this is actually representing revenue, not, uh, not revenue un without capacity, but revenue under the capacity 60 rooms. And we make sure the price is also right. P1 is not smaller than P2 and both of them are greater than zero. So you can solve this problem in Excel solver or another optimization solver. Uh, similarly, as one price problem, this can be solved easily uh, in Excel solver. And if you do, you get P1 $140, P2 $80. The sales for the higher price are 30, right? Because that's the demand. If you calculate this at 100 price 140, you get demand 30. And if you put price 80, you get demand 60. However, remember the 60 includes the 30 who are willing to pay the higher price. So the additional sales for the lower price are just 60 minus, right? The demand at this price minus the demand at higher price P1. And so this is just 30. It happens that they are the same values. Uh, and now you see, and even graphically represented the same solution, right? The total revenues at price 130, we get a sales 30. That's the $4,200. And, um, and then the additional revenue at price 120, we get additional 30 uh, units of sale. So we get another $2,400. The total is $6,600. And if you compare it to the $5,000 that we uh, found out as maximum revenue in the single uh, price problem, you see this is about 32% higher. So there is a great potential to improve revenue here. And actually, if you use three or more prices, you could increase this further, right? It's actually the area of these two triangles that are to the right of the green rectangles that are still potential revenue to be captured because there are some people who are paying $80, but they are willing to pay more, or they are paying $140, but they are willing to pay more. So there is even more potential increase, but it's not going to be, uh, for another price, it's not going to be as much of an increase. So there are some diminishing returns here. Now, of course, this all, uh, this all our analysis, it's all nice to have uh, problems, optimization problems formulated that uh, give us higher revenue. But the challenge here is, of course, to get people to pay high price when they are willing to pay a high price and not pay the lower price, right? Obviously, the big challenge is how do I get those people who are willing, those 30 people who are willing to pay $140 to actually pay $140 and not jump on the price $80. And it happens that in, under certain circumstances, with the right conditions or with the right uh, additional restrictions uh, for, seg you know, by, if we segment the demand in, in a clever way um, and we segment the customers, uh, we might restrict some customers from uh, obtaining, right, forbid them from obtaining the lower price and uh, they will only be uh, given the, the the only price available for them will be the higher price. Um, of course, we don't segment them by their willingness to pay, but we try to identify a group of customers that are willing to pay the higher price that have other properties. For example, they book last minute or um, they, they, uh, they are maybe interested in shorter stays than, than uh, the price customers who are not willing to pay 140 and they pay lower price. So sometimes we segment customers into business customers and economy customers through some restrictions and then capture, if not all this of this 6,600, at least, at least most of that increase in revenue can be captured.